What's up YouTube? This is Andrew with Programming Liftoff and today we're going to complete part 4 of the QT C++ calculator tutorial. Now in this part we will have a partially working calculator so you'll be able to do for example 9 times 2 should be 18 Yep, uh, but you won't be able to clear the calculator yet and you won't be able to uh, use these operation buttons on a two digit number which sounds kind of weird but if you do uh, 2 plus uh, 36, as you can see, that didn't get entered correctly. Instead of 36, we get 6. So we'll fix up those last few details in uh, part 5. Um, so part 5 will be our last part, and we'll have a complete calculator after that. But for now, let's get started with part 4. Alright, so I'll open up the project that we left off with in part 3. So first we're going to start by uh, connecting the buttons to the binary operation press slot. So to do that we'll just copy um, some code that we wrote previously and we'll change unary to binary and the button will start with add and we'll copy that and we'll paste that three times and we'll change add to subtract multiply and divide alright so we connected the buttons to the binary operation press slot so now let's uh, put some code in the slot so to figure out we need to store what button was pressed um, so to do that, we could do something like this. Um, don't type this because we'll do it a different way. But uh, we could check uh, the text of the button. And if it's add, for example, we'll do one thing. Uh, we could check if it's subtract and uh, do another thing. But instead of doing that, uh, we can uh, take advantage of the push button uh, class that Qt provides us. And we'll use a uh, we'll set an attribute uh, to true which means the button was pressed so to do that we'll say button and we'll say set checked is true so what we're doing is we're getting the sender up here so we'll get whatever button um, was uh, pressed and then we'll set it uh, set its checked property to true um, so whatever button is pressed, uh, it will now be checked. But uh, before we actually use this, we'll need to enable this property. Um, so we'll come up here to the constructor, and we'll say UI push button, and we'll find add, and we'll call set checkable. And we'll set that to true. So that allows us to, to set it. Uh, checked. We'll do the same for add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Alright, so now we can check all these buttons, and down here we check whatever button was pressed. Uh, so that should be working for us. So now we need to figure out uh, what what the number is in the label when they press the operation button. So we'll store that in a variable called first num and we'll just get that from the label. So we'll say first num equals UI label text dot two double. So we'll just convert the text from the label to a number of type double and store that in first num. And we'll need to access this number when we uh, press equals because we'll need to perform a calculation such as adding two numbers. Um, so since we need to access it from this slot as well, uh, we're going to define it as or declare it as a global variable. So we'll put first num up here and we'll give it type double. All right, so we store the first number now. Uh, so now let's increment our implement the uh, equals equal press um, so to figure out uh, to imp uh, implement this method we'll figure out what operation button was pressed uh, so now we will actually use a series of if statements to 
uh, check uh, what button was pressed, uh, what operation was selected. Alright, so we'll check if add was checked. If it was, we'll do something. Um, if not, we'll, we'll check the other buttons, such as subtract, multiply, divide. Alright, so now we have a check uh, for each of these. Um, and we actually want to do else if here. Else if. Else if. Alright, um, so if one of these is checked, then we'll uh, do one of these, execute one of these if statements. If not, if they just press equals, then uh, we'll do nothing. So, first we'll start with the add. Uh, so, if they add, we'll need to, we'll say label number, just have this variable equals first num plus second num. So we just add two numbers and store that. But uh, as you can tell, we don't have a label number variable declared yet, so we'll need to declare that. Uh, that looks like it'll be a type double. So double label number. And we don't have second number uh, declared yet either, so uh, that will be a type double as well. Alright, and we declared first num globally, so we have that already. Okay, so, so we add the two numbers, but uh, right now second number isn't uh, isn't initialized yet. So let's initialize that by saying uh, second num will just need to get whatever uh, whatever number is in the label right now. So label text dot to double. Alright, so that will get uh, whatever's in the label. And sort in second number, so now we add the two numbers, so we got that done. Now we'll say uh, we'll need to create a new label, uh, that will be a Q string, so we'll uh, convert uh, this number of type double uh, to a string. And you'll recognize this um, since we've done it multiple times uh, in the previous videos. Uh, so as you can see, we used a new variable right here that we haven't declared yet. So we'll need to declare that as a Q string because um, that's going to be our label. And we set the label equal to a Q string. And don't forget the semicolon at the end down here. All right. So now we can set the label. So we'll set the text equal to that uh, Q string. All right, and one last thing we'll do here is we'll say uh, UI push button, and this will be push button add set checked. False. So it was checked before, but we just used it to add two numbers. So now we'll set. Now we'll say that's false. We're no longer. Ha we no longer have the add button selected. Uh, we'll need to click a different button to do the next operation. All right. So we have that code. We'll just copy that um, down in the rest of these um, else ifs. All right, and as you can see, this is a, this is if we subtract, so we'll do first number minus second number. Uh, but other than that, we can leave uh, almost the rest of this. We'll need to set uh, push button subtract uh, to false, so it's no longer checked. Uh, so when we multiply, we'll change that plus to a multiply. 
change this from add to multiply and when we, uh, when we divide we'll change that to division and set push button divide uh, checked equal to false alright so now uh, now the equal button should be working for us let's uh, run it and try it out uh, use of undeclared identifier label so we can see um, we can see that we can't just access the label it's a part of the uh, the form right here main window dot UI uh, so we have to use that UI uh, uh, dereference the UI pointer to get the label element from the user interface so we'll just add that up there and we'll try running that again and it's still not liking it uh, doesn't like the uh, we're converting it to double that's actually a method so we need the open and close parentheses there so let's run it again and third time's the charm alright it comes up so now we should be able to do let's do 9 minus 3 that looks kind of funny 93 that's not really what we typed but 9 minus 3 let's hit enter negative 84 so what did that do that did uh huh that looks like it did 9 minus uh, uh, 93, I believe. Uh, so that that's not right. Uh, so it kind of, it did subtraction, but it didn't do it the right way. So uh, we'll have to fix that. So what went wrong was that the label isn't cleared when we, six times, at this point the label should uh, kind of be reset. So six times three we should we shouldn't have that six anymore um, so to do that we'll need to uh, let's see when digit press this is where we update the label when we press a new digit so up here we'll need to add a check so we'll say we'll say if one of the operation buttons is checked then uh, we want to start a new number so to do that we'll say if UI push button we'll get add is checked and then we'll use uh, the OR operator and we'll do this uh, also for we'll do it for add, subtract, multiply, and divide and that's kind of a long line so we'll just uh, put enter to put it on two lines And we'll change the buttons to add, subtract, multiply, divide. So if um, if one of these operations is selected, instead of doing this, which is appending uh, right here, we're appending the uh, the next digit to the old digit. Uh, we just want to put the new digit. We don't want to have the old digit there still because uh, that messes up our result so just do the new digit else else uh, we do want to append it like we have been so else we'll keep this um, right here where we're appending the digit so let's run that expected expression so we have that extra or that we copied and pasted so that's one thing to be careful of when you copy and paste code make sure you change everything uh, correctly as you want it so you don't introduce a bug um, so I believe it should all be working now so now if we do 2 plus 3 as you can see we don't have the 2 there anymore so that should be 5 alright cool we can't clear it yet but we can do uh, times Five should be 25 uh, divided by 3 I'm not sure what that will be but that will be a decimal yep uh, we got a decimal and then if we add 2 we should get 10.3 uh, um, let's see minus 4 was that 
Um, so yeah, it looks like all these buttons are working. As I mentioned before, uh, they, they partially work. Uh, the clear doesn't work yet, but say if we'd have this 6.333 minus uh, 51. Uh, we, we don't have that working yet where we can subtract a two digit number. And why is that? Uh, because uh, one of these operations is still uh, checked. One of these buttons is still checked. So we're just, we're just replacing the whole label with the next digit that we press and we can't get a multiple digit number. Uh, so to fix that, uh, we'll fix that in the next video, part 5. Uh, thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you in that next video.